Thank you. Hello, Silo. Yeah, Tim, uh, maybe we can start off with sort of like a, just a recap of the things that happened to kind of help kind of baseline everybody. I think a lot of folks here who are attending, obviously, have heard about it. Um, but maybe we can kind of start there and then uh, open up the floor to some questions and then maybe also then get into the the proposal. I think um, I was able to only glance it um, quickly, um, but it sounds like uh, there's a there's a lot of thinking here um, and with the community's input, um, hopefully we can kind of all buy into what the next, you know, what the future is for optics here. Yeah, ab absolutely. So um, as a kind of very brief summary, we discussed discovered um, a couple of days ago that Optics um, was in recovery mode. Um, this is a uh, state which, as the name suggests, for those of you with experience of Windows 95 and so on, um, is not a usual situation. It is uh, something which it's, I think was intended originally, I mean, it's it's in the code, it's like, obviously the code is open source, it's up there on GitHub, it, this was a feature which was built deliberately, um, I think some people have been calling it a backdoor, but it is not a backdoor, it is like there specifically because, you know, Optics is a new project, it's in beta at the moment, and, you know, there's a chance that like some, some you know, there's a bug or something goes wrong, and so this, this recovery mode was put in there by the team, um, perfectly legitimately and with but, you know, in order to be able to kind of give us the best, uh, give, give us all the community the best chance of like recovering funds if there was an issue um, with optics. Um, and, you know, there so far has not been an issue, but like the recovery mode is a kind of useful thing. However, it is obviously a powerful tool. Um, one of the things it can do is upgrade any of the contracts and it by upgrading the contracts, of course, you can change the smart contract code, which means that you can do things with the funds that are locked at that bridge. Now, um, that's not to say that we have any evidence or belief or expectation that that is something that would happen. However, we were surprised uh, and we did not expect to see optics in recovery mode when we when we saw this. Um, and so, um, you know, we tried to establish like what had happened. We reached out to some of the individuals who had been involved in the deployment um, uh, of, of optics. And uh, we unfortunately were not able to like ascertain any more information as to like what, why this is the case now, who uh, is on the new recovery manager multi-sig as soon as like recovery mode was entered. Within a few seconds, it was transferred to a new multi-sig and Obviously, this is this is kind of like not the not the social contract that the under which like users bridged funds in or started using optics. It's like you know it is a kind of material difference. Um, and so while like you know no funds have been lost, all funds still remain locked in in optics. It is something that we really wanted to share with the community as soon as possible, even though we don't have clear answers about how to. Um, you know, get get out of this situation right now in the existing deployment. Um, so that's kind of like where we where we where we stand. Um, yeah, a few folks have kind of mentioned like why do we mention James Prestwich's name in the initial um, in the initial um, post? Really, it was kind of like you know we for, for me it actually is about differentiating it from like a vulnerability exploited by an unknown actor as we have seen a number of times in the space, right? Like, I think this is this is definitely, um, you know, for, for me, I think, you know, uh, James obviously has a like high uh, regard held of him in the crypto community, was like lead on this project, he's heavily involved in, um, it's like building an, an, an operation and I think like, the fact that, you know, at some point, like there's a kind of activity linked to him, which like has this recovery man just suggests that, you know, this isn't like North Korea having gone and taken hold of optics and everybody's about to lose their money. In, in no case do we believe that is that is the case. So in, for me, it's actually about like providing a little bit more important information that people can use in making a judgment call about like how they feel about what they may have in optics uh, right now. So um, 
Yeah, so that's a kind of like situation I, I think of where we are. So there's two like routes forward, which I think we've been actively trying to pursue. Um, the first one is that we are, um, the first one is that we are like working through intermediaries, through as many different chances as we possibly can to try and ascertain like what happened here, why this is the case and like move the current deployment of optics back into, um, uh, back into the kind of the control of like the governance multi-sig which was agreed and which you would expect as somebody looking at optics as a from, a from a contract perspective to be able to make kind of upgrades rather than this new multi-sig which we do not um really know much about um the if we can't you know optics is a decentralized system it runs on a blockchain like c labs is not in control of it like we obviously at c labs have been a big part of like developing it but it, it it runs in a decentralized fashion um without assistance of the current holder whoever that may be of the recovery manager like we are not going to be able to get optics out of recovery mode at least in this deployment so so that's one avenue and the second avenue is like let's move forward as a community and think about a new deployment of optics and potentially one which can address you know optics launched as a, as a beta it's done in, incredibly well and has been very successful um but there are definitely things that we can all do as a community probably having especially learning from this uh, incident that we may want to um the, you know we may want to um we may want to look at and so yeah we can chat a bit more about that i just posted some of that in discord but yeah that's kind of early in, in developing thanks Sam. um just to recap the way i kind of like the way i understand it is we the C Labs team worked to kind of get the message out really quickly when we had first discovered and realized that it is in recovery mode. And I think acting quickly, um, the team is really trying to move in the best interest of the community. And also why we're having the AMA here today is to field questions that may not be getting answered. Um, uh, I mean, we're trying our best here, but you know, there's nuance to a lot of the questions that people are asking. Um, so I appreciate you know you going through the, the how we where we were how we got to where we are and kind of what the future may look like. Uh, thank you for that. Um, people have started asking questions. Do, um, can we start going through through these? I see um, someone named CCC um, and then also uh, Human um, has their their hand raised. But um, can we jump into some questions from the community? So the first question I think you may have answered here, which is from CCC, they had asked um, that the bridge is now in recovery mode, moving the multi-sig um, uh, to a single admin key or to, to a different multi-sig. Um, and there's a claim that that person doesn't have, doesn't hold the key. Um, but um, I don't really know what the, the question here is really ascertaining to, but I think the question is like, who's controlling the bridge? Um, and can you shine some some insight there um, on uh, on on like I don't understand necessarily what recovery mode means. I think you've tried to describe it, but <clears throat> if the project is in recovery mode, is it um, are the funds basically managed now by that that new multi -sig? Um, I think is this the first question in the chat from CCC? Yeah, this is the first question over here. Yeah, cool. Okay, so if I think I've got the right one, um, what do C labs conclude based on what C labs conclude that James took bridge into recovery mode. Yeah, we we don't we don't know who took the bridge into recovery. Mode. Like we 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 do know that James did the um, initial deployment, obviously while he was an employee at, the, at C labs. We we don't know who took the bridge into recovery mode to um, to the single admin key. Nor do we know who, presumably with the same key, then like transferred um, recovery manager account to. Uh, a new multi-sig, we, we don't know. No, but that the the recovery manager address could have only been set originally as part of the deployment, right? Correct. Okay, so like who did the original deployment? So it, we, like according to our records it was uh it was james but that doesn't this this is why we we kind of really have been looking to get james's help on understanding this because it, he was part of a team and like the work you know the, the pull requests i think we shared have been 
Um, you can see reviews from other people in the team as per usual best practice, but we don't, don't have a record of who provided that original address and it's concerning to us that it was not set as expected to the governance multi-sig um, that it can override. Okay, so, so the only people who could have set that address are the set of engineers who did the deployment. Initially correct, yeah. Okay, and, and we do know the individuals that did the original deployment. We believe so, yeah. And we can contact everyone except just that one engineer. We have worked to contact and, and be in touch with, like through a variety of means, like everybody who was uh, close to, to optics, yeah. Okay. There's a lot of circumstantial evidence there. And look, we, I don't, you know, for, for, for you're right, but like for me, this is really about like, you know, our users fund, like pro, my priority is like users and thinking about like how, how we make the best, of, like, I don't think any of us want to be in the situation, right? Especially like, um, the week before Thanksgiving in the US, um, maybe in other countries, maybe the, maybe slightly more, but, you know, I think, um, I think like really for me, it's thinking about like, how do we, how do we kind of be as transparent as possible about like the current situation? How do we give people all the information to help balance, like make their own judgment calls? Um, how do we advise users who maybe can't like, um, you know, can't like analyze chain data and um, like wade through source code? And then, um, you know, what's the way forward? So we are migrating everyone to a new deployment then. Well, I mean that's one option, yeah. And I think we 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 can we can do that and get that up pretty quickly. And I think you know, as I mentioned on the Discord post, um, I think there are some things that it's important to do differently this time um, about the that. Deployment. That sounds like an awesome plan. Like we should just migrate. Cool. Well, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't jump to that conclusion right away. Like, I think that's what partly why we're having this discussion now is to figure out the best path forward. And so on that note, just for a little bit of clarification, Tim, uh, was ownership transferred to an EOA or a multi-sig? Because I was under the, some, I was under the impression it was a EOA, but you said multi-sig. Um, hi, I, I can't see. Oh, I've got too many boxes. Yeah, this is, I can't this see is human. Who. This is human who's asked, who raised their hand asked. Oh, hey, so. human. Um, uh, I believe that uh, after recovery mode was entered, recovery mode was transferred to a new multi-sig, I believe. It was but you don't control that. Sorry? But we don't control that. I don't know who controls that. We don't that. know who controls that one, yeah. Are there so the any situation. other alternatives other than migrating to a new deployment? Like current deployment well, is not safe, right? So. Like, like a question I have is, for example, let's say if the optics team were to come out with a clarification on like what exactly is happening, because we're really only hearing one side of the story here. Um, and so let's assume that optics team comes out and you know, so nothing, let's assume nothing malicious is being done and they transfer ownership back to a multi-sig that has some level of community governance. Like, I think the question is, do we want C labs to be running the bridge or do we want to stick with the optics team? And I guess we, we need some further clarification around like, what is the situation with the optics team? Do any of them still work at C labs? Um, and just like, like if, if, like if optics were to spin up their own bridge, like who's gonna be on this bridging team? And do we think that it would be a better bridging protocol than what the optics team is gonna keep working on? Yeah, I mean, there's a many, many great questions uh, in there. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think like purely from a migration point of view, there are many advantages of sticking with the existing bridge. And I think that is everybody's preferred route if we can make this work and we can maintain community confidence in like the governance of this bridge. Yeah, um, you know, like the token representations don't need to change. People don't need to like pull funds back across the bridge and migrate them across a new one. It's it's like better for everybody, I think. Um, having said that, like, 
um, yeah, you know, we, we, we do, you know, Optics is an open source project. It was like conceived at C Labs. We have like a bunch of like knowledge remaining inside C Labs. Um, maybe if, are you like, are you kind of thinking about like, what's the Optics team doing? And like, where, where are they? Is that kind of your? Well, I guess specifically like, do, does anyone from the Optics team still work at C Labs? Um, and if not, like who, like, I guess it's just a matter of like, who's going to be working on the new bridging protocol and like, do we as a community think that that's going to ultimately be a better solution than what the optics team is going to produce? Because I know you guys like acquired that team specifically to build the bridge. And so my gut tells me that they will continue to produce better technical uh, material, but um, like obviously incidents like this, especially since we don't have like clarification on what's happening, it is, that is also kind of like a red flag from, it, it's just not, not the most professional thing. Ideally they could come out and be more transparent about this, but at the end of the day, like, they are US citizens, we all know who they are. James is one of the most highly like respected people in the space. And like, I don't know, just so, something doesn't feel right <laughs> like from both sides here. So um, I guess like I'm-, I'm, I'm I mean, I, 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 I feel like that's, that's almost like an orthogonal thing to consider for a long-term, but like the short-term, like the short-term is like kind of what, what, what can be done right now to improve, improve the trust in the bridge, right? And which is like, I understand organizationally, there's some questions about like, you know, long-term is this, is this C-Lab or is it optics or whatever? That, 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 that's long-term, let's hash that out later. Short-term is like, what can we do right now to regain control and just make the damn thing safer and, and restore trust? Because if you don't restore trust ASAP and you, you spend all this time talking about organizational stuff that can be hashed out, you know, over the next couple of weeks, People are just, you know, hanging around and not knowing what's going on and people are losing trust. So like whatever we can do right now to restore trust, do it. I, I have a technical question. Hi, this is Gavin. Um, what does it mean to, for the new multi-sig to have um, control of the bridge? Like what can the new multi, like what can this multi-sig do or not do? Great question. Yeah. So because the bridge is in recovery mode, the recovery manager multi-sig, which is the which is yeah, which it was transitioned to from the EOA originally, um, can basically execute arbitrary like um, code. So there's a function I can uh, we, we can point you to in the governance router, which basically allows it to kind of do anything, which means that um, it can upgrade the contracts on this and on other chains. And, um, you know, by upgrading the contracts, you can change this, the smart contract code. So you can remove checks and you can do whatever you like, really. So it and kind of, the, like the, the most concerning thing to me is that like the recovery mode kind of sidesteps the actual governance multi-sig, which was set up when Optics was, start, was created. So right now, effectively, everyone who uses the optics bridge trusts whoever controls the multi-sig, the recovery multi-sig. And Correct. we don't, and no one has taken responsibility for, we, we don't know. Uh, Correct. Correct. And that might, be, that might be fine, right? Like, you know, before everybody was using optics and trusting the uh five person five entered five address like governance multi -sync. no there's there, there's a huge difference there in that i agree yeah the, the recovery mode was activated without any you know by a third party your time lock is one second so uh someone is acting irrationally here okay or maliciously or irrationally or they're just not behaving in a proper way and we don't have any time lock to prevent prevent any malicious acts from being executed almost immediately. That's right, and that's the biggest concern to me. Um, that not that anything's likely. But I, I mean, well, it's hard to. It, it, I can't speculate, right? Like personally, for me, like I don't believe that anything is going to get like any like 
bad action is about to happen on the optics bridge. However, like you are right that technically um, the three holders of that new multi-sig could go and take arbitrary action. And you're absolutely right about that. Because the, the bridge, like the optics bridge, effectively custodies these funds, correct? That's right, that's how it works, yep. So, um, so, I mean, I guess maybe that's the clearest message here is that currently the optics bridge has funds custodied um, and control of those funds can be uh, taken by the multi-sig, the current multi-sig, there are three signers. We don't conclusively know who has control of that. And so like, I think that, isn't that kind of what everybody needs to know? Like there's an unknown controlling all funds that have moved across the, the bridge. You're right. I think that is like the, the, the key point. And I think something that we definitely need to do a better job of highlighting, like in terms of, you know, one of the, the questions I think that came up on Discord is like, are our funds safe? Um, I think that is the key key point to kind of trying to um, kind of help people understand like the difference from the situation before to the situation now. So I, I want to kind of steer things back. Um, appreciate the questions from Gavin, um, Diwu, and uh, Human. Um, and I'm not trying to cut anybody off. I just want to make sure that the questions that are piling up in the chat are uh, being addressed because they're definitely related. Um, and to your point. Uh, Tim, regarding the, the messaging here. I think, again, the, the team seems to have acted quickly to assess and try to make changes or you know get out of recovery mode. Now we're in the situation where we're still in recovery mode um, and this, uh, this multi-sig or you know, um, Gnosis multi-sig um, and the people that control that are, um, we believe that because of how things were deployed that the people that deployed it should know who they set the recovery mode into. I mean, that's the that's the uh, assumption here. Um, to the point be um, regarding, um, I think someone had asked regarding the, why the time lock was one second versus two hours. Can we talk a little bit about that? Um, was it was it modified as part of the deployment? Was it modified after? Um, because that kind of change is sort of what sets us up to be in a tougher spot than if there was a two hour delay. Correct? Yeah, I was. We were looking at that. Um, just yesterday, it looks like there is a bug in the deployment which does not set the configuration correctly. Um, so it looks like the time lock um, in the config gets overridden. So, you know, I, I, I assume good intent and I guess, uh, I, I, I believe that was an accidental like oversight. So I mean, easy, easy coding mistake to make. Um, uh, I think we would need to double check. We need, I mean, we absolutely would, should have, like the team should have caught the fact that the deployed entity did not have the correctly configured value and it was definitely a gap in testing. Um, so I guess it is interesting though that whoever took control of the, put the contract into recovery mode, um, kind of, I mean, maybe this is kind of getting to the edge of my like familiarity with the contracts there. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the ownership was transferred like only a few seconds apart. And I can't remember off the top of my head whether you need to be in recovery mode to transfer ownership in the recovery key or not. But um, yeah, anyway, it's resulted in the fact it could be a programming bug. It, you know, who knows? Um, but it does, it does mean that recovery mode was entered without any users of the bridge being able to like spot that on chain. Um, and it's also the case that there was no good tooling to help end users identify that the bridge was in recovery mode as well. You know, on that, on that note, um, there's, I'm going through the questions, but uh, somebody had, uh, had asked regarding the contract and whether or not it's being monitored. Um, I know that the DevRel team 
who's um, stepped in to help folks with their bridging requests. There's a, there's some there's separate things that are happening, like you know someone's transaction takes too long, and so we do monitor that. But is there additional work being done to keep track of um, the contract um, and any of of the other um, accounts that are you know maybe a part of the the, the multi sig that um, now govern it in recovery mode? Yeah, so maybe it's worth just talking a little bit about the current like operations of optics and where that's where that's happening. Um, so C Labs is operating the agents that make up um, optics and um, funding the gas for uh, some of their activities. And obviously, there are like smart contracts on each of those those chains. And so, as part of that, there is a bunch of like monitoring and operations happening. Um, around like the setup of the system. I think um, we have been chatting about like how to do better monitoring specifically of this, like this situation. One of the challenges was that until I think today, um, C Labs didn't control the UI um, that was deployed uh, for the old version of Optics. And I think like we're trying to trying to like be able to and that was like a, a challenge last week when we were unable to kind of like put up messages about like you know slow bridging or like other other kind of issues with agents so i think you know with that we should be able to um like also look at um how we can kind of you know provide better monitoring there so to the clarify thing? you guys like identified this happening two days ago like this is when C Labs first became aware that this change was made. Um, yeah, I can't. I, I don't have off the top of my head exactly when it was, but yeah, it, it the the change actually happened like se uh, like several weeks ago. So I guess this gets to a question of like, are there practices in place at C Labs for like monitoring core contracts that are like crucial to like assets like on chain? Um, and like, if so, like, why was like, like how frequent are those checks done? And do you plan on making them more frequent in response to this? Yeah, and I think part of the, absolutely. And I think like, clearly there is a significant incident review that needs to happen um, as part of, as part of, as part of this. And I think like a lot of those deployment and monitoring and security best practices need to definitely be looked at. Um, one of the challenges was that the optics team operated kind of more or more independently than uh, as, as a you know, project operating across chains and quite distinct from the um, uh, teams working on and contributing to other parts of uh, the cello network. And so there, absolutely, there are a lot of significant monitoring set up um, throughout. Um, the, with, with, with optics, um, there, I, I mean, like, I can answer a specific question, maybe about like the specific type of monitoring that you're looking for. Well, I mean, just with like regards to this contract, like, is this contract was it previously on C Labs's radar as like one that you guys should monitor? Uh, like, I I don't know if this is like practices that you guys do, and if so, it, I mean, changes were made 24 days ago, so I mean, that's quite a bit of time uh, to just be yeah. hearing about it, so. Yeah, yeah, totally. And no, it was uh, so like it was not part of the like core data pipeline that we have to like monitor and observe every change like that happens in uh, in in the system, um, or rather like the pieces that run of it that run on Ethereum was 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 definitely not. And this change was actually made on like, optics contracts on Ethereum. We have a question from Robert. Um... Hey, Robert, are you here? Can you see your hand raised? And I saw your question. Ah, yeah, thanks, Eric. <laughs> Do you want me to uh, share the question or would you? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a question about kind of node providers, uh, bridge contracts. Yeah, so more along the lines of, uh, so Optics is the messaging system in itself and the bridge is really just an application on top of that messaging system. And so, uh, you know, kind of concerning infrastructure and dependencies, was there some sort of uh, node service provider that was used to deploy the actual bridge contracts on top of optics? 
you mean like a alchemy or a quick node or uh, something like that for Ethereum or um, uh, yeah, for node for Celo, that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. But for, I guess, optics in this case. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, we, yes, as far, as far as I know, yes. And a different one for each chain. Um, hey, it's Gavin again. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to belabor this point, but like, you know, when we talk about what safe practices are for people and their funds, we often tell people like, don't leave your funds on an exchange because if it's not your keys, it's not your crypto. And this is kind of what's happening here, right? Like if you've got your funds on a bridge and the bridge is custodying the funds and the control of the bridge is in the hands of an unknown party or, or at least unidentified. I get, I'm getting the sense that people have a sense for who is controlling it, but they haven't been identified yet. Like, isn't the best course of action to advise people to just kind of remove their funds and self-custody them or custody them in a safe way so those get sorted out? I mean, it's, uh, it's a it's a great question. I uh, it would be yeah. I I I I kind of it's it's a difficult question to answer because different people have different tolerance to different kinds of risk. Right? For any system, there is a whole range of as you know, as you well know, a, a, a whole set of different types of risk that exist. Um, and, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, as you, as, as I think somebody mentioned, this has been the case for like 15 or 20 days or something. And the, um, uh, like the bridges continue to operate like, you know, no, but that's, that's, that's not really the thing, right? Because we discovered it and now we're discussing this. So whoever yeah. is, whoever took the bridge also knows that we're discussing it. So whoever took the bridge, if they had some plan to yank the funds or do whatever it is they were going to do, they kind of probably would want to do it soon before everyone starts bridging money back out. I think we're getting into game theory. Um, and I agree that um, I do think people need to be given a sort of a path forward to them. And I think it'd be good to talk through sort of what the options are. As you, as you had said, like people can choose what they do. Like I personally, um, you know, have, I'm also using the bridge as well. Um, and people have been asking me questions. Um, and I've been sitting put waiting to see kind of the, the plan for um, kind of new features and, and things like that. And maybe we can talk a little bit about that and give people the option because at the end of the day, it's gonna be people's choices here. Um, and I think providing like what you had initially talked about, it, you know, uh, providing a path forward for folks to mo move to a different um, version of Optics Bridge or talking even more through the idea of like um, setting, setting up uh, sort of a, I think we talked maybe about standing up in a, a different version and you talked about swapping different contracts and whatnot. Um, maybe we can talk through sort of the options for folks and directionally where things are headed for um, for the optics as it stands right now. Because yes, there's there's a looming thing over ahead. That, that entity, I think the reason why you folks had put the message out was to shine a light on it. Um, and to Divo's original point, like, yeah, there's people that are, there's possibly, you know, a person um, who um, maybe obviously not thinking in the best interest of us, but we're thinking about the best interest of the community. So can you talk to that? And I think um, human also has a question, but I'd like to hear yeah. kind of Tim kicking things off here. Yeah, I, I, I'm absolutely. We can talk about those next steps. And I think like, just to come back to um, Gavin, your point. Um, yeah, I think anybody, um, uh, I, I would definitely suggest that anybody who doesn't feel they understand the risks right now, or that they do not uh, feel comfortable with those risks, like take their funds back and unlock them. Um, and I think that's a very reasonable, uh of action and um it's not one that personally for me i i um yeah i mean i i will i will <laughs> leave it i will leave it there um the uh in any case like yeah let's talk about let's talk about the potential of like 
new deployment. I mean, I think we've covered already that this is, you know, not the simplest and um, not, the, not the ideal case, um, but it is something which we could probably move on pretty rapidly. So, uh, sorry, real quick, Tim, uh, just because I mean, we can sure. uh, obviously we should talk about that after. I still think. I mean, as you had started off, like, I think that's like the last thing we would want to do ideally. Um, so I guess to start off this, 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 this last question is when's the last time you guys talked to Anna at Optics? Uh, that's a great question. I believe we've had contact with her uh, indirectly today. Okay. Cause I mean, I'm looking at this uh, GitHub issue on the Optics monorepo and this change to one second time lock appears to be a known issue that's been known for 24 days, uh, or I think that was when it was first committed. Um, and I guess like the optics team is aware that this was like an issue. I mean, we're trusting obviously that they believe this is an issue and they plan on addressing it. It's labeled as a high priority thing. Um, I'm not sure if you guys saw this, but just wanted to put it out there and get your thoughts. Yes, we saw the issue yesterday. Um, and um, yeah, I think um, we're still trying to make sense of it. Um, I think it maybe answers some questions, but it also opens up a whole bunch of new questions. So if you guys talked to Anna, I forgot if you said yesterday or today, but I mean, did you guys ask her about that? And do you have any like further insight on that particular uh, issue? We haven't talked to Anna yet. We're, we're just scheduling and yeah. Gotcha. If, if you have, if you have control of the UI and the eight and you're running the agents, is there a way that you can kind of do things so that people can't continue to add funds, but then kind of urge them toward room, like exiting instead? It's possible for us to put in a warning where, um, you know, if people are, are moving funds from a bridge where they would, um, in a direction where they would be putting funds into an escrow contract. So for example, if you're moving a native asset from Ethereum to Celo, or if you're moving, uh, say, uh, a native Polygon asset from Polygon to Celo or a native Celo asset in another direction we could offer uh, a warning uh, to, um, to nudge people to not put more funds in and, and perhaps also to nudge people to, to take funds out. Um, is, that, is that the suggestion? Yeah, like um, just be, if you're running the agent, like the infrastructure, then maybe there's a way to kind of prevent. So there are the two sides. One is there's the, there's the UI uh, and if you change the UI so that people can't move from an or originating chain to, you know, another chain. So, you know, you're not going to move native Ethereum assets anymore to say Celo. You can only move back from Celo using the interface back from Celo to the originating chain. And then same if you're moving, if you've got, um, right, if you've got assets in Celo, from, from that originated on Celo in the Ethereum ecosystem, you can only move it back. Uh, like it's just like a safe way to unwind so that people aren't adding more assets under the custody of the bridge, you know? And then, uh, and then maybe just a simple statement of facts. Like currently this is this, the control, the, the bridge. I don't know, I just, I'm sorry, I won't, I, I don't wanna, go on about it but like it's it's kind of a bridge is kind of a poor name for this thing because it's not it's kind of like poker chips right like you've got you go to the the bank teller and you get you put money at the casino and they give you poker chips and then you use the poker chips but if you come back uh to cash your poker chips in and there's no money there you don't get your money back so ostensibly the the you know the entity controlling or entities controlling the bridge could take to take the underlying funds, right? And then you've got just these vouchers. So the idea here would be to let people know, educate people, what is a bridge or what is this bridge? How does it work? Um, who, how is it being controlled right now? And what, what do we know and what don't we know? And a path to kind of exit um, safely. 
Hey, Kevin, thanks for the feedback. I think making change to the, the UI is a great um, next step and can be done uh, very quickly. I think the Merrick's point, um, messaging um, at the top and then making the, the needed changes to um, prevent folks from coming in and letting them kind of decide um, uh, which direction they want to go, if they want to take it out or if they want to um, kind of let things sort get themselves sorted out, I think is great feedback. So thank you. Um, Someone had asked regarding um, non-bridge funds or if whether or not those are at risk. And I, I think we need to be very clear here that um, CUSD, CRO, um, CELO, um, et cetera, any CELO reserve related asset um, or token um, is not at all uh, uh, affected uh, with the bridge piece. Um, and I just wanna address that for Sultan, Sultan Pak. Um, moving forward, um, I, I think the feedback here generally is kind of letting people have, <clears throat> helping people prevent kind of coming in while things need to be still sorted out, I think is great feedback. Um, and then providing people a path, um, path out, uh, I think makes a ton of sense. I still think we should talk a little bit about um, kind of where things are at and maybe the two, I, I really see two scenarios for, for optics. One is we get out of, our, um, uh, recovery mode, right? And then we still make the changes um, uh, around the, you know, the multi-sig and actually involve more people uh, beyond the original team um, and current multi-sig owners. And then the other sort of more drastic, expensive, so to speak, um, change is the kind of optics version two or whatever, whatever it would be called. Um, and I guess the question I have, Tim, for you um, is, um, what, what's the thinking there, right? Is it like a time-based thing? Is it, um, uh, are we trying to kind of move more quickly and maybe even stand things up? Like what's, can you talk through sort of the future of where things are right now for optics, optic V2? Yeah, um, so uh, we've been working on a new deployment um, of optics. Um, there are a few things that, uh, are slightly different about it, but most of the stuff is exactly the same. I think, um, you know, we'd already been thinking about this, but I think with feedback from this call, I think we would also look to prioritize um, uh, doing some work, as much work as we can, given like the uh, limited control C Labs has, but like uh, on the existing optics to. Um, like make sure there are no sharp edges for users and to help them uh, help encourage, like, you know, con continue providing um, optics to the greatest extent possible, given that people have used it in all directions, starting in all directions to like bridge funds in, 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 uh, and across like those chains. Um, the deployment would be, um, yeah, so, so let's talk a little bit about like a few of the things that we could potentially do on, um, on, on a new deployment. And, you know, again, before we make this thing live, I think it's really important that we kind of have broader buy-in from the community about like what like and managed and how it's controlled. Um, so the first thing I think we probably want to do differently is make sure that the deployment is properly audited. So, um, this means that we would like, you know, obviously somebody has to be trusted to make do a deployment and somebody has to be trusted to like, you know, control some keys to set some configs. Um, that's true for all uh, systems, um, but those configs can be verified and, um, and checked. And I think like that is something which we absolutely like, um, absolutely want to do. Second thing is like getting to the place we uh, thought we were or, like a better place ideally around like a governance and a recovery manager uh, multi six. So I think we can like have a much more open process about like uh, choosing and like identifying individuals who are like on this multi sig and make it bigger and like make it a higher threshold and make it like harder to, um, uh, you know, you know, do things like, for example, um, you know, with, with the, with, with the stand up of um, Celo mainnet, for example, um, 
uh, the Celo security team did audits on validators, as some of you will know and remember. And like there could be similar things done on like the uh, custody practices of the multi holders um, to, you know, strengthen certainty that <laughs> this thing ain't going into recovery mode again unless it really uh, unless it really needs to. Um, fixing the time lock bug is an obvious one. Um, setting that value to one week or two weeks so that if something did happen, we could still use that feature but that like users would get for warning, linking that thing through to the UI. Um, at the same time, I think we can make this like faster and at the same time more secure. Like one of the big support frictions I think we've seen through the optics beta is like the three hour fraud window. I think that can be significantly reduced, especially if we do um, a couple of things. First get like the community to deploy watch agents. Like there's no C labs. I mean, C labs is happy to operate them, but I think it would be stronger if like other folks also operated them. So watch agents are like part of the optics architecture and can be used to kind of detect um, fraudulent updates. Um, um, and the second thing is also like to have multiple um, agents actually uh, like signing updates, multiple updater agents and having a kind of threshold of two or three updater agents potentially run by different organizations as well. Um, before we move to a kind of fully decentralized um, kind of uh, incentive model, uh, which has been always in the um, optics roadmap. So yeah, with, with those changes, I think the security profile would be unchanged, like moving hours. And I think that will give users a lot of better experience. And I think that's easier to do from an initial deployment rather than kind of doing anything to try and recover there. Um, the fine, another thing that we can and have done today is add Avalanche support. So C chain um, support for, for, um, for, for Avalanche. So that opens up the potential to bridge AVEX and other tokens from there. Um, and we've also, we, uh, C Labs commissioned a code audit of Optics. It came back clean um, because it was so clean. We kind of like forgot a little bit about it. And that was a bad move. We should have like released that publicly to the community. Um, and in fact, there are several like audits. We, we, we collect and catalog audits on the Cello or website. Um, every uh, core contract upgrade for Cello has uh, an audit that's published there, but we ought to have uh, done the same for um, uh, optics and so we can definitely do that now so yeah with a bunch of those changes I think like we could be looking at a a future where we have a genuinely kind of open collaboratively operating collaboratively developed um, kind of deployment and so you know to steal a phrase but we could end up be building back stronger um, than the kind of beaters allowed us to do so yeah, would love would love everybody's thoughts on that. And I have yeah. not been able to read any of the chats. So I'll Tim, do that now. Yeah, Tim, thanks for kind of painting a picture, right? Of like a, a better, more, you know, kind of better, well, more well-designed, um, decentralized uh, approach here. And yes, Optics has been, I mean, it's like a beta product, um, but a lot of us are, you know, have poured in a bunch of, uh, of our crypto trying to, you know, be a part of these yield farms and a whole bunch of great stuff happening on Solo. I think I'd like to, knowing sort of what the future could be, and it seems like there's also this step where like, let's say, I, I don't want to get into too many hypotheticals here, but let's say um, Optics is able to get out of recovery mode, right? Just we're able to sort this, sort this out. Um, would v, the V2s that you've suggested here also play a path? You know what I mean? Like all the great things you had talked about um, regarding, you know, shortened um, bridging times. Is that uh, is that also applicable? Um, do you think do you think that's a potential path? And I did I didn't I don't want to go too deep on that. I just wanted to talk like as that being sort of like a half potential step. Who know you know who knows here? Um, um, and then I wanted to pull things back into like the current state of right now, and maybe kind of give some some guiding a guiding path for folks who are deciding to stay, maybe do nothing. Folks that are deciding to um, uh, I think in the chat, people are talking about like, you know, bridging out and then coming back in through a different bridge, um, bridging out, maybe, you know, kind of like waiting and seeing. Um, and if we can talk a little bit about the sort of options people have um, and and then also how can we kind of communicate that option-wise? Yeah, great. 
um, great questions. So yeah, so the situation right now is that we are like putting together this second deployment before it would go live. I think there would be a lot more um, community control, uh, like all of the steps that I talked about. So that's like something which is definitely a few days off if we choose to go down that path. Um, we're also looking at, we're also getting into into a position where we can like make changes to the old UI. The two would definitely run next to each other side by side anyway um, for a while, obviously to allow users to kind of um, move out funds. Um, so the situation right now, I think is like, we want to take a bunch of the feedback from this session. We want to like think about how we can use our time and resources best to like support users. It sounds like a lot of that is around monitoring around preventing users making uh, uh, decisions without like access to um, kind of the full, full picture. Um, and I think, yeah, those are those are kind of what I what I was um, hearing. Um, Human and Mark, I think you've been. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, um, so I saw in the chat there was um, a conversation around creating an insurance pool. Um, yeah, I was kind of curious if, if anybody had any more thoughts on this. I think it's a potentially interesting idea. Um, uh, you know, I think a lot of people have voiced um, their thoughts about how, um, you know, pulling out funds right now is uh, the safest thing to do. And, and I think for, um, you know, I think objectively that makes sense. Um, and, you know, but we've also heard from others that they would rather not for various reasons. I wonder if uh, if an insurance pool could potentially um, uh, allay kind of concerns, um, even potentially for both parties. Um, so I was just wondering, um, yeah, is, this just we, this topic didn't get much attention uh, so far, and so I thought maybe it was make makes sense to actually spend a little bit of time on it. I think I, I kind of posted that jokingly, slightly. I don't know if it's the best idea to launch an insurance fund after uh, a hurricane has has set upon us. Uh, but <laughs> one thing, that, if there's I mean, any like, other thoughts on that, where where would the money for the insurance pool come from? I, I'm not sure about an insurance fund either, but I think there's like a possible path forward with like a trusted party that's already on Cello, with wrapped like the C Bitcoin and the C ETH assets. I don't know if the Cello Foundation is in a place to like sponsor the printing of more of those assets and allowing people to swap like in a fee-less manner to those assets. Right, but 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 if things go wrong, the reserve takes a hit. It, it's either the reserve or the community in either situation. So which one would you prefer? That's the sort of like trade-off I would calculate. Yeah, I think only the reserve would take a hit if the reserve was somehow providing funds for the, this insurance pool. I, I don't know if that's necessarily the best move forward. Um, if that doesn't happen, I don't see uh, why the reserve would take a hit. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I agree that there's, um, yeah, maybe this is something also that we can discuss for Optics V2 as well. Maybe that's the, the right context to discuss it. But yeah, I just thought it was an interesting idea and something to think about. So two, two quick uh, things for me. One is, uh, so if we look at like where all the Optics value is, for the most part, it's in DeFi protocols on Celo. So I, I, I would personally, I mean, for those that don't know, I, I am one of the contributors to Mobius, but I'd like to hear from uh, like I see Evan and Patrick are both in the call from uh, UbeSwap and Moolah, respectively. I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are on this and just what your, I guess, like if, if you, you know, we're already talking about deploying a new instance of optics here. Um, and so I guess like if, if you guys are actually on board with this um, and like like what you guys plan on doing with your bridging interfaces. And then a quick follow-up just while I have the mic, uh, I saw Zviad had posted about the Celo price oracles. This I think is like way, a way bigger issue for us to like put our heads together and solve is like, how can we uh, fix it? Cause I mean, this, 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 the same thing is like prone with the thing that basically dictates all value on Celo, which is the Mento price Oracle. Um, so I'm curious if this is like kind of, I guess, motivating C labs to move away from a more centralized setup for that. Cause 
I think the risk there is far greater than what we're dealing with here. Yeah, on the Oracle's point, I think like it's always been everybody's plan to move to a fully decentralized Oracle setup. It is something which is like um, like quite challenging to do. We um, uh, as a community decided to go ahead and release the mainnet without um, this piece in place, um, but it's definitely um, definitely been uh, and continues to be on on the near term. It's now on the near map for C Labs. Um, we are also working with um, Oh Marek. I don't know if I can announce that partnership. <laughs> um, hey, hey Tim. Um, we're at time. I just wanted to okay. give uh, human is uh, oh, sorry, they I don't know who you if you're who you are, but um, I think I've seen you on a bunch of discords. Um, the uh, the the chance to get an answer around sort of other projects and how they're thinking about bridging. I do think the proposal that was just posted seems a bit, I mean, it just came out. So it's hard to maybe have a position here, but maybe we can give them a, a quick one, one minute answer and then allow us to wrap this up and get the team back on, you know, the, the put in the work to, to solve for these things. So um, can we do that just real quick? Yeah, hey, this is Evan from UbeSwap. It's still early. Um, whatever UbeSwap does will be done um, in conjunction and coordination with the community. Uh, I think that's really just our stance so far. And you know, the Optics Bridge is open. There are other assets that people can trade to if they want to in the interim. So I think individuals can kind of take the appropriate decision the appropriate action in the meantime. But yeah, this situation is still unfolding. So uh, no no, you know, concrete course of action yet. Thanks, Evan. Hey, hey this, is, this is Patrick with Moolah. Um, so the Moolah pools are uh, cello, cello dollars and cello euros. So none of the underlying assets uh, are bridged over that Moolah currently supports. So our risk exposure is a little bit different. But that being said, uh, MCUSD is a base pair for a number of yield farming pools uh, uh, for bridged assets. So our users are exposed in that sense. And uh, my thinking is that everybody has to make that risk calculation on their own, uh, given the given the information that is uh, that is currently provided. Um, you know, it, uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't think that I can make that decision for anybody, um, but uh, you know, there's, uh, there's certainly a higher level of risk because of unknown entities or parties that uh, appear to have control of uh, all of the assets that have been bridged over. Uh, there's strong circumstantial evidence, uh, it appears, uh, as to who probably controls those, but again, that's speculation. It's unknown. It's not. Uh, it's not a fact at this point. So, if your uh, risk tolerance is okay with uh, that level of unknown, then it's probably okay to keep your M tokens paired with Optics tokens. But uh, if you're if you're not, uh, then it, then uh, you you probably should uh, remove your uh, your your collateral. Those, those are my thoughts, and uh, you know, we'll we'll work with the community to uh, help resolve this and move things forward. Thanks, Patrick. Hey, Tim, uh, Merrick, you folks want to have a kind of parting uh, message, and then also I'd like to redirect folks to the Optics Discord. We do have a community chat going, and um, I think that's where we can continue the conversation. Also, I'll try to pull some of the questions here um, to field them um, because we're at time. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Eric, uh, and thanks everybody for like coming along. This is um, a, a really productive discussion. We're still trying to get to the bottom of what happened here. I think it remains everybody's like um, best. You, you, you know, almost always like um, people are acting out of best intentions, and I like personally, I still believe that. But I think like if we can come to a resolution where we figure out how to get the current deployment back uh, out of recovery mode. Um, that would be that would be the ideal outcome for everybody. Um, if not, we are ready to kind of start a new deployment and move move 
together, um, move forward together. So um, yeah, please keep asking questions and making suggestions on um, the, uh, the, the, the uh, Optics Discord. Cool. With that, um, I want to thank everybody. Um, I posted a link in the um, in the chat directing folks to the community-owned optics um, thread. Um, if your answer wasn't, if, sorry, if your question wasn't answered, um, post it there, and we can spin up conversation. Um, and uh, we'll also be communicating through through this Discord, um, Twitter, and the forum on sort of next steps and keeping people updated as to what we're doing. Um, I just want to end with one thing, which is, um, again, a lot of questions come up because things don't seem, you know, like everything's figured out. But the reason a lot of the messaging was put out was so that folks know that we are trying to be as transparent about what we know um, and not sitting on stuff. So um, uh, I think it can go it can go either way. But really, the Celo team, C-Labs, we're, we're here. We want to build a strong community and we're doing the best we can to make sure you are part of it and you know. Um, uh, you know, the, the most information you can to make the decisions you folks need to make. Um, but thank you everybody for attending. Um, we'll post a video also after um, and look forward to chatting with you folks and um, getting through this together. So thanks all.